I'm Kim and this is my February wrap up. At first I thought I'm going to let you know some facts and numbers about um, the reading I have done in the past month and after that I will go on to talk about the books themselves. I'm not going to give too much details on all of the books because I also have a post about this on my blog where I have more details on the books themselves such as publisher, publishing date and all of that stuff and I also have um, reviews of most of those books up on my blog and also have some videos of them here on my YouTube channel so I'm not going to get into too much detail otherwise this video would be way too long. So let's start. On my TBR I had six books for this month and I read three of them. I didn't start any other books on my TBR. Um, I started three books of my TBR and I finished all of them. I also read eight other books one of which I had already started in January. So all in all I've read 11 books in February and I started two books but um, I already finished them in March so I did not DNF any books I only started two books that I did not manage to finish in time. Of those 11 books I read 10 were over 300 pages and one was a graphic novel. I listened to three audiobooks, read six books on my Kindle and, and two books in a physical format. I read eight books in English and three in German. And that's pretty much it for my stats. Yeah, so let's get into the books. The book I started in January and finished in February was Die Feuerheilerin by Ursula Ne. It's a German historical novel I got off of NetGalley and sadly this book isn't available in English yet so I have no English title and I do not have an English review for this on either my blog or my channel but I do have a German review on my blog and my channel so if you speak German feel free to watch. And I rated um, Die Feuerheilerin with 4 out of 5 stars. The next book I read was actually an audiobook so I listened to it and it was Empire of Storms by Sarah J Maas which is the fifth book in the Throne of Glass series. I rated this book five stars as I did with all the other books in the series because I simply loved it. I will not say anything about this book because it's the fifth book in the series so obviously if you have not read any of the other books anything I say would spoil you so let's just get on with my list. The other two ebooks I ebooks I read? No, we're talking about audiobooks. The other two audiobooks I listened to were The Assassin's Blade, which is a prequel novella to the Throne of Glass series and I again rated this one five stars. The last audiobook to li I listened to was one I did not actually really want to listen to. It was um, Hollow City by Ransom Riggs. So maybe if you've watched any of my other videos, I think I mentioned it in my reading story. I read Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children and I did not really like it. There's nothing wrong with the book, I just didn't really get into it. And I did start Hollow City after finishing Miss Peregrine simply because I do not like leaving um, series unfinished. But I didn't really get into it so I stopped reading it and I decided to listen to it on audiobook now so I can finish the series and just have an easier time of it as opposed to having to sit down and actually read it. So as I already knew beforehand, I didn't really like this book. I rated it three stars because objectively I couldn't find anything wrong with the book. Like, I like, I think the characters are well written, I think the plot is interesting, I think the world building is well done, so there's nothing really wrong with the book. I just personally did not really like it, so I rated it three stars. So for the two physical books I read, the first one was the graphic novel I read, which was Saga Volume 1. And this is the first volume in a series that has, I think, somewhere around 10 graphic novels, but I'm not sure. And it's about, um, it takes place in interspace, so it's a sci-fi graphic novel. And there is a war between, between two different races. And this is about two people, one from each of those races that fall in love with each other and have a child. And so um, the female, she's actually in the military of her race, of her people. So for her to be in love and have a child with someone from the other, from the opposing people, is a very bad thing and they're being hunted by both of their governments and have to flee from them and also protect their child while they're on their way. 
and um, yeah I really really liked it I do not have a review about this on my blog or anywhere because it was my first graphic novel and I just didn't feel comfortable writing an actual review about it but I did rate it four stars because I really liked it I really liked the plot I really liked the characters and I really liked the artwork so oops it's just here's just one like spread the second physical book I read was The Wrath and the Dawn by Renée Adier and this was amazing. I rated it 5 stars and I have a review of this up on my blog. I did not film a video yet because I want to do a video once I've read and The Ross and the Dagger as well to have like a series review. But yeah, I really loved it. It's kind of a retelling of 1001 Arabian Nights and it's about this girl, Sherazad. I don't know how you pronounce it in English, but that's the German pronunciation. And um, there is this caliph, which is something like a king, and his name is Khalid. And every day he takes another bride, or a new bride, and every dawn he kills them. So after Sherazad's best friend has been taken as a bride and consequently killed, she actually volunteers to be his bride, and she's the first woman to volunteer, obviously. And yeah, as you can probably imagine, considering this is a book and not a short story, she does not die after that first night. And yeah, I'm not going to tell you what happens. It's certainly very interesting and I just love the whole ambiance of this. I love the story, but I really, really love the culture in it. So um, I don't want to offend anyone. I don't really know a lot about this culture. So if I say anything that's wrong, please excuse me. Feel free to correct me. I do not mean any offense, but um, this culture is obviously Arabian in its origins or it's supposed to be kind of an Arabian culture and I really, really like that. I've always been fascinated with fascinated with 1001 Arabian Nights and I've always been fascinated with Aladdin. Jasmine was always my favorite Disney princess, so I really like this side of the Arabian culture. So this book was really, really interesting to me anyways. And as I said, the plot was really interesting and the characters are really well developed. And also not only are the two main characters great characters, really well developed characters, also, also the two main side characters are very well written as well. And maybe my favorite side characters like in general, aside maybe from anyone who's ever been in Harry Potter. But yeah, so I think that's really, really great and I really love it. So as with the first book I mentioned, all the other books I read I got off of NetGalley. So I know that's a lot. I think I talked about this in one of my previous videos. I did not really know how NetGalley worked and requested a bunch of books and got approved for a bunch of books. So I have a bunch of books to read from NetGalley. And the first one, or the second one after the Feuer Heilerin was um, At Water's Edge by S. McPherson. It's the start of a series and it's a contemporary fantasy or an urban fantasy. But I think it is quite interesting. I only rated it three stars because there were a lot of things I didn't really like um, about the writing and the world building and the characters. But it still was an enjoyable read so I gave it three stars. The next one I liked a lot better. It's Quest of the Kings by Robert Everett. It is supposed to be a high fantasy novel for fans of Sarah J Maas and I've read quite a few really bad reviews about this book and all of those reviews really took this pitch into consideration about the high fantasy novel for fans of Sarah J Maas. I, to be honest, had forgotten that pitch when I got around to reading it and I kind of, although I knew it was high fantasy, to me, it kind of more seemed like a, um, like a historical novel taking place somewhere in the Middle Ages. And so a lot of those criticism, I didn't really feel were that big of a problem, considering it was a historical novel for me. Um, I rated it four stars because I really enjoyed it. But one of the main criticisms was that it's quite sexist, that um, the protagonist is constantly reminded that she's supposed to marry and quit her job, that she's supposed to take more pride in her appearance and then she would be able to find a husband and all of that jazz. And yes, considering this book was 
supposed to be for fans of Sarah J Maas, that's obviously like really really bad. I mean, Farah, Aileen, they're they are such strong and powerful women, and comparing them to the protagonist in this book is just really really bad. But as I said, I did not think about this picture in reading the book, and to me it just seemed like a historical novel. And in this, and looking at it, and looking at it from this point of view, all of those things didn't really matter or weren't that bad. Obviously, I think those things are very bad. You're not supposed to. I don't think you should be supposed to quit your job and put all your attention in or your. And put all your effort in getting married and finding a husband obviously not but in the middle ages that's how things were so to write about it this way in a historical novel is not something i have a problem with that's something that just was that way and if you want to write an accu accurate historical novel you kind of have to write those things so looking at it from this point of view i did not mind and i really liked the story and yeah I do have a review for this up on my blog, so if you want to know more, you can check that one out. Then I read two more German books that sadly aren't available in English. One was Die Rote Löwen by Thomas Zibula, which was another um, historical novel taking place in the Middle Ages. And then I also read Glass House, Jeder hat etwas zu verbergen by Christian Geilus, which is a thriller that is taking place in modern day Germany. So, yeah, I'm not going to say more about those books because... They are not available in English, so it's not really important to anyone who doesn't speak German. Oh, and I rated Glass House with three stars and Die Rote Löwe with four stars. So the last book I read was Which is Sacrificed by Chrissy Moss and I rated this book four stars. It's a high fantasy novel and it's the first book in a trilogy, I think. To me, this book did not seem like the first book in a series, it seemed more like a prequel and in the beginning this bothered me quite a bit but I soon decided to just forget it and think about it as a prequel novel and looking at it that way it was a really good book. It was worth a read and I gave it four stars as I said. And that's pretty much it. The two books I started are A Court of Thorns and Roses and Carry On. I'm not going to talk about them now because I want to talk about them in my March wrap up but yeah that's it. I hope you liked it. If you did Please subscribe and give me a thumbs up. Maybe let me know in the comments down below which of those books you've read and what you think about them or what you have read in February and just anything else. Bye!